Welcome to the Milestones Podcast, where we engage, inform, and encourage parents in strategic moments in their families' lives. Whether your family is close to the Lord or far away, this conversation is for you. Well, welcome to episode one, season one of our family milestones. Uh, We've identified six of those milestones that you'll see on this channel. We're going to cover multiple topics, multiple ranges, have different people in here, mostly just from our staff that want to talk about the different issues going on with uh, kids all the way to parents. And so uh, we know there's a lot of resources out there for kids, uh, but for this is going to be strictly for parents. And so we want to come alongside parents in different milestones of children's lives, whether that is birth all the way through graduation. Those are huge milestones in a kid's life, but let's come alongside the parent and let's do a couple things. Let's inform them what's going on. Let's encourage them and let's engage them in what's happening and so how do we do that and we've got a few people from our staff in here today so we got ron uh who's been here for uh just a little bit ron how long you been here 17 years now going on 20 yeah man been doing this about half my life now so (laughs) (laughs) and beth is here draper's here how long you been here beth 17 years 17 years draper Nine years. Nine years, and I've been here five. So you got a little bit of experience in here. Uh, and so I don't know about that, experience. I don't know about experience. <laughs> so uh, I want to kind of open it up this way just to identify what the milestones are. First of all, as a church, we identify the blessing. The blessing is what age, uh, Beth? So it's birth through four years of age. Birth through four years. And then we step right into that, into the basics. Ryan, what is, what is that? So basics basically covers kids from the time they move down to kindergarten. So you got your K-5 age all the way up to fifth grade. Yeah, and then you're going to step into the leap. That's kind of going from fifth grade into sixth grade, so that's sixth and seventh grade time. And then you've got the drive, so that's obviously when – that kids turning 15 to 16 is a huge milestone, especially for the parents. So many questions to ask. And then you got the launch. And that's that 17 to 18, that 11th grade, 12th grade parent that uh, it's just a whole new phase of somebody's about to leave the house. And so I kind of just want to go over those three things. How do you engage and inform and how do you encourage a parent during these milestones? Draper, kind of start with you a little bit of how do you become engaged with uh, your your, your child at a young age that kind of stays the course all the way through the time they graduate. How do you do that? You know, Caleb, to be engaged, um, I think about communication. You know, communication is key. Um, regardless of how old a child is, you got to be willing to step into their world. I know at certain ages it's tougher. You know, when they're one, two, three, you know, elementary school age, it's tougher because some of the stuff that they're into, you may think is silly. But you still got to communicate with them and step into their world. That pays dividends for you as that child gets older because you've invested in them. So uh, what is it that your kids were into that you were not into that you had to force yourself to do? I mean, I mean, mine, I remember the first time I had two TVs in our house. Our kids wanted to watch Bubble Guppies and it was Saturday morning. And college football was on, and I went right to the store and bought another TV. And I was like, no, nope, not doing that. So what was yours? So my kids are a little bit older. I remember it was Backyardigans and uh, the Doodle Bops. And I could do the Backyardigans when they were out. That was Nickelodeon. and then, But the Doodle Bops, man, that was weird. Like, we never did the Teletubbies, but the Doodle Bops were really weird. You just think about that name, Doodle Bops. I mean, you think of what? Doo-doo. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's the first thing that came to my mind. I, just, yeah, so, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, so, that is the first thing that came to my yeah. mind. Uh, Ryan, this is kind of a little bit of, of your world of uh, that that age of first grade, the fifth grade. I mean, I've got kids around that, and they, they come up with some weird stuff. So how do, you, how do you engage as a parent at that just basic level? Well, speaking of weird stuff, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to wrestle in my backyard. I mean, I did, but my parents let me do it and let our friends participate. That's, so that's what's wrong with you, huh? I know it is. <laughs> Too it many is. chair shots. <laughs> and that did it exactly was. And lots of other things. We won't get into that. But anyways, my parents still participated in that. They knew we were doing it, but my mom never told us that we couldn't do it. So the way that she kind of loved and engaged and participated in that is always something I remember. So that's my challenge to other parents is just participating, you know, just being there and being involved. Because when you do that – it becomes more than a milestone. It becomes even something greater. It becomes really radical to them in their lives that they remember forever, just like I can remember that, or my dad participating in sports and always being our coach. So I always remember just my parents being involved. So that's my encouragement to other parents to just participate and just be involved 
And when you do that, your kids will look back and remember those moments and those milestones. Yeah, I see a, a, a huge shift from, I mean, Beth, you probably see this when, when you start out, you have a kid, you're, you have to be engaged. You don't have a choice but to be engaged as a parent. And then you got to be invested, involved, and aware of what's going on. But as you move from like the birth, you move into, you know, now they're walking and all of a sudden now they're starting elementary school and now they're getting into middle school and you see people become less engaged and they're more just kind of invested and involved. And then as they get up into high school, you see them less engaged, less, inv less invested, and now they're just kind of aware of what is happening. And so how, how maybe, or how do parents become less engaged you know, as the blessing all the way to launch, how do you, what do you, is there something that they kind of constantly do that you're thinking, oh, this parent is becoming less engaged because of this act that they're doing? Or does that make sense what I'm asking? Right. I, I don't know that I necessarily see them um, becoming less engaged. I think it's, they're not as involved in the preschool ministry because they have been so engaged in those baby years and they're tired. And I think that that a lot of parents tend to need that refreshing that going to church brings them, that being in a life group brings them, that being around other adults can bring them encouragement. Like, hey, I, she was up all night with a 103 degree fever and they have other adults that they can talk to. And so they're not as involved in the preschool ministry. But I think that that, too, speaks to our preschool staff and the trust that they have in taking care of those children. Now, do we need more parents involved in preschool? Absolutely. Um, I think it's important for children to see their parents teach those Sunday school lessons and for children to see their parents come and be involved in K3 and K4 church and sing songs of praise to the Lord because they're watching you. They're imitating you. Yeah, I, you, uh, you almost you got to start that early because there's plenty of dads that will teach their kid how to throw a curveball, but they have no clue how to hit like a curveball in life. You know, you just taught them like how to throw it, and you've been on them for three years on how to throw this curveball. But literally, some curveball in life happens. You have nothing because you you spend energy and time somewhere else because you're engaged. You're engaged. You're just engaged in another piece of their life. And so, all right. So let's get into to to inform. Like how how are we going to inform? Like if you subscribe to this and you say, man, I want to know what are ways that we're going to, to inform people. Um, I would say, Ryan, most people feel like the question they have, they have to go outside the church to get it. So uh, is, do you see that? Yeah. I mean, the great thing, you know, my wife, she's a dental hygienist and uh, she used to clean a lot of people's teeth around this uh, campus. So I used to find out a lot of things <laughs> about people, but not anymore. No, like who smokes? <laughs> yeah. 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 All that sort of who stuff, drinks, you know, people's personal lives, coffee? all this. All, <laughs> <laughs> Who drinks coffee? You know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> no, nah, she, she can't do that. It's against the law. But anyways, it is neat, though, with her being involved in pediatric dentistry that she does sit with parents and families, and she has conversations with them. And one of the things we were actually just talking about is, is you know, Caleb, Draper, Beth, all of us, we used to just go to our friend's house and hang out all day, spend the night, not a question. That's the big question now that, you know, parents are probably looking to when it comes to sleepovers and spend the nights, you know, like, hey, what do I do if my parent or my child wants to go and spend the night at a friend's house or even right after school, tell me hop in the car, like, hey, I really want to go to so-and-so's house. Well, we don't really know this. It's trying to get your kids to understand questions like that. So that's what we hopefully do through this is help parents guide them through questions like that if my child wants to go to a house that maybe they're not coming with or don't, don't so know a lot about. So what about rapid fire? Okay, so what question do you think people look for outside of the church? You know, they don't. maybe that's not the question they can ask to the church, but what question do they go outside the church to answer? And I think some of that, too, at a very young age is, is it okay to go spend the night at somebody's house? You know, just very simple questions. You just think, well, this is not for the church to answer. You know, like, well, I think, you know, any, any – um, Age appropriate, like what's the best age for my child to have a cell phone or to have social media or, you know, whatever those things are like. I think a lot of the questions that people go outside the church to get answers to is is the things that culture is hidden, hitting them with, you know, whether it's uh, like I said, cell phone, social media, dating, things of that nature that, you know, parents need answers to and not just answers, Caleb, but they need biblical wisdom 
answers to those questions. I do think conversations about sex, I think how to talk to your kid about that. I think uh, questions that usually are just awkward because they're not everyday questions with your family. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's crazy to me the amount of people that will go and they've never prayed with their family. And that, that might be common for us because we're in the church we serve, but that's not very common at all. And so how do you even begin that? Um, how do you walk that area? But Beth, what about you? Um, you know, conversations in the blessing that people kind of go outside the church to look for. I would think one of the biggest conversations would be how do I deal with my anger towards my husband or my resentment toward my husband if he's not getting up to help or if he's not helping do the dishes or how do I handle all the multiple chores that I have around my home and still care for my child, still have dinner fixed when I get home? Yeah, it's not um, my fault. I can't breastfeed my kid. <laughs> right? Is that what you're talking it's about? Exactly That's your exactly fault. where my head it went right now. It is so okay. your fault, Kayla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think they, and then also just, I think they're they're tired, they're weary, they're they're at each other's throats. They don't know how to, if they disagree on a parenting issue or a discipline issue, or I think we should let them cry it out. Well, I think we should pick them up, uh, you know. Just different things like that, I think, is... is and um, I think, too, like the two things y'all were talking about, what's, again, so different from us growing up is kids now face those same questions at such a young age. Yes. Like even anxiety, you know, things like mm -hmm. that, and mental health. Yeah. And that's a lot of questions that parents can reach out to us. Like me, I, I try to do my best, you know, give them wisdom and guidance, but I'm, I'm not a counselor, and sometimes we have to send them outside the church to find someone that's a good Christian you know, basis counseling that can help walk their child through this certain situation that they're dealing with. Yeah, that, I think that's the first way I start everything is, hey, I'm not a counselor, and so let me just throw that out there first, yeah. and then I show them zero mercy when I talk to them. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Uh, the last thing is this. Uh, so how, in this entire um, uh, Milestone podcast, we're, we're also going to encourage people, you know, um, just real-life encouragement. And, I mean, obviously that will be just God-centered, even John 16, 33, man, fear not, for I've overcome the world. Most of the times, most of the conversations, topics we'll go into just have to do with fear, fear of the future, fear of what, how your kid's going to turn out. Are they behind? Are they, are they who their friends are? What does that look like? And so, I mean, kind of just start with you don't have to fear. If you're a follower of Christ, he says, you do not have to fear anything else in this world ever again. Do not, because I've overcome the world. And so just bringing that on. But I, in, before we get into some of all these topics and People obviously are going to be able to scroll down and check out whatever they want to check out. But um, what episode probably are you the most excited about covering or talking about uh, with your crew and maybe even just in your milestone? <laughs> uh, me personally, the launch, just because of this stage in life that Tinker and I, where we're at uh, with our oldest daughter, um, senior in high school. So getting ready to launch her off. And that's, I tell you what, man, that's scary. Just thinking about, you know, her about to start, who knows what, God knows what, but yeah, thinking about the launch. Can you can you imagine? I mean, uh, Zoe is incredibly wise. She's a leader. Can you imagine walking through that when your kid's not that? They don't know the Lord. They're far away. And I think that would be one of those moments where, like, you could come alongside and encourage somebody. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, you know, one of the things that, you know, um, we've been blessed with here is Zoe has had great leaders that have poured into her. And uh, Tinker and I, we, I can't one say. One of them is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about well, his wife. Yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying I don't know about I don't know about great leaders. You know, a long time ago I don't I don't know about that. Caleb then probably got her back on the right track after a couple of years. We had to fix her after she got a ride in the yep. ministry. After yep. she came out as children's ministry, was like, oh, we got it. Yet theology is all wrong. Gotta, yeah, Ryan, Ryan, you, you got to change your pictures in that hallway. Her picture is still hanging up. She's in third grade. Hey, trust me, I've been talking to my staff about that for a long time. Uh, yeah. What about you, Ryan? Is there a topic you're thinking? I'm, I'm gonna yeah, I mean, it. church and sports. Obviously, growing up, I know Caleb. We played a lot of sports, Draper, all that sort of stuff. Beth, you've coached some upward sports alongside. I did. Best, best team actually beat my softball team one time. <laughs> greatest, greatest. So that where that's life. tattoos from. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but talking about the importance and priorities of church and sports and the impact families can have in that. But then also, you know, Draper's talking about where his kids are at. You know, Jake, he's five years old. He just loves playing a switch. 
So maybe that's a topic we come up with of, of hey, just put the switch down. All right, yes. man. Let's, let's let's call it put the switch down. Let's quit, let's quit the pouting. All right. <laughs> the switch, the Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. The Nintendo switch. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. I, when, you said, the switch when, up. You, when you said switch, I had flashbacks. <laughs> I had PTSD. <laughs> It was, uh, it was a paddle yeah, for me, bro. Yeah, paddle yeah. for me. Beth, what about you? What topic are you, you looking forward to covering? I, I think whose turn is it to get up in the middle of the night? Let's take turns. Who's going to get up this time? That's a tough phase. It That's, is a phase. So sometimes a it's tough, tough to go phase. revisit if you've left. And, and you, you think you're go never there. going to get out of it. I remember, like I'm a grandmother now, but I remember going through it and thinking, I'm never going to sleep again. I will never get eight hours of sleep again. We may have to get a doctor in on that one because some people have a syndrome where they sleep hard at night and they just don't hear nothing. It's called near death. No. So when they when they fall asleep, they it's like near death. They don't feel the punches either or the elbow. <laughs> they yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't remember that. Face. That was me. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get up. <laughs> yeah. That's why Draper's not going to be in that conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think qualified. mine would be uh, probably is is TikTok okay? Uh, that we're going to do that with the leap. And then with the drive, sex, speed, and drugs, uh, and the launch, packing the suitcase, which is a huge deal. And and really, I kind of want to close out with this. That's really kind of what hope this is, is as a parent, you're just coming alongside other parents, helping them pack that suitcase from the time they are a young child all the way into that moment when they're going to pick that suitcase and walk out the door. And so you, you want to put things in that suitcase that – train your child up in the way they should go. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. And so uh, that's kind of what we want to do. So anyway, we hope everybody is going to enjoy this. We want you to never give up and stand firm in the word and keep going.